Slut Talk listeners, welcome back to the next episode of Slut Talk. Um, Today's guest is Levi Varner, hailing from, where do you live? Uh, Linden, Washington. Nice. Levi, welcome to the, welcome to the show, man. I appreciate you jumping on here. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, so Levi, let's, uh, let's give a little bit of, uh, introduction to who you are, um, where you're from, what you do to, to the Slut Talk listeners and to me, cause I, I talked to you yesterday briefly, but there's definitely things I can learn about you. I'm just meeting you. So. Right on. Um, yeah, my name is Levi Varner, 18 years old from Washington state. Uh, first started riding snowmobiles. I doubled up with my dad and he used to ride snowmobiles. I started riding with him in front of his, uh, M1000. It was like a 2005 M1000 and he customized his handlebars that he'd put on his riser so I'd be able to hold on to him and he'd put a little wiring so I'd have hand warmers on my bars so my hands wouldn't get cold I'd wear those mins heck and, yeah that's uh, when cool. I was about, yeah when I was about 10 years old he bought me my first sled it was like a 1990 something Indy Polaris um didn't do shit gonna <laughs> ride anywhere in the deep snow I wasn't ready to ride in the deep snow but yeah it was funny when he bought me that sled we went to Whistler Canada Okay. And we were riding up the road. We were riding up the road and my sled just quit. You know, it was too high of altitude. It just quit. Sled quit. So we threw it to the side of the road and I had to double up my, with my dad the rest of the day. Oh boy. And, uh, we got up top and we started playing and, uh, I was 10 years old at the time, nine, 10 years old. And he let me take his, uh, M1000 for a, for a ride without him on it. And from there, I think oh. I just started loving snowmobiles. Big sled, M1000. So it was pretty powerful. And, um, at that age, I couldn't st- I couldn't pull it over, and we'd always go over to my uncle's house, and they both left their sleds there. And I'd always every time we go over there, I try to start it, couldn't have <laughs> start it, and and I got lucky one time, and I pulled it over, and I was so super stoked about it. I was like, oh, I started it. I feel like I can get my own sled. So from there, after um, the three forty no longer worked, he um, bought me a two thousand four M eight the Snow Pro series, the big tractor bodies. Um, and it's funny, we still have that sled. We It's a rescue sled, so when there's sleds broken in the back country, we, we go out and use that sled because it's just a beast. We actually used it two times a season. Both of them sleds were Polaris's. Oh, um, easy, we had to take careful. Both, we, had to, we had to take Polaris's out of the mound. Nah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I've been riding since myself, probably from the age of 10, and uh, my dad would always buy new sleds every couple of years, and he'd give me his sleds down, so... My first mountain sled that was actually fun to ride was a 2015 uh, Arctic Cat Snow Pro 800. And from there, I started like learning the aspects of riding and getting better at it. And I just always wanted to get better at it. I always look up to the the professional riders and the big dogs in the game. And I always had set goals. I want to be that someday. And from there, it just kept progressing. I'm not – just kept progressing. Um, and then – my favorite, the sled I'm on right now is a 2019 Alpha 165. I'm not such a fan of the long track, so I just got done buying a new sled, as you know. Um, yeah. It's a 154, so I'll be a little more playful. Um, that's just about me, how I got into <laughs> snowmobiling, basically, with my dad. Hell um, yeah. And, yeah, I just got raised into it by my dad. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I took right off into it. I love it. Um, yeah, that's good, good stuff. And what do you do um, – for work you're a firefighter yes yeah so this is actually gonna be my first season as a wildland firefighter um okay i actually got in touch with the company that i'm working for it's grayback forestry it's in uh merlin oregon um they got like four bases they got one in uh white city oregon merlin oregon and then in john day oregon and then one in like minnesota or something i don't know what base that is but i got uh i got in touch with them over instagram i seen an ad so i applied for them and it was a pretty quick process. Um, it was like, it was too quick of a process. I got an email from them back and said, Hey, we want you to come down to Oregon for training. And I was like, all right, am I going to be able to come home after this? And they were like, probably not. You're going to start work the following Tuesday. I was like, I didn't have a vehicle. I didn't have a vehicle at the time. I did, but you know, things happened that I got in a car accident. So I didn't have a vehicle at that point. Gotcha. I hadn't driven for like six months. So I had to get a vehicle. Um, rent so expensive i didn't want to rent a house because that's like a year lease i'm only going to be down here for a certain amount of months so i bought an rv got it um 
but before coming down here to do wildland firefighting, I was doing concrete work okay. uh, locally in Washington State. Gotcha. Gotcha. Did you work for Knife River? So you're repping one of their hats. Uh, no. Yeah, this is my uh, cousin's boyfriend or husband now. Uh, I think he might be involved somehow, but yeah, he just gives me a hoodie and free hats and stuff, so I just wear it. Nice. Gotcha. Right on. Cool. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I mean, so what? What's a specifically about firefighting that like drew you to it? What were you attracted to about it? Oh, uh, absolutely. It's it's two main reasons. It's outdoors. Uh, three. It's outdoors, which I love being outdoors. It's in the mountains. So like I look at it this way: if I can work all summer long and ride all winter long, I'm gonna be in the mountains my whole <laughs> life. You know, six months doing firefighting, six six some months doing snow building it's like my life will be involved with the mountains and I, I do enjoy the mountains i would say um i get everybody that i've like all my friends are like how do you go from snowmobiling to wildland firefighting that's like the opposite you like the cold and now you go to the hot why well, I, I simply explain to them so i can have fun in the winter time it's a it's a seasonal job you can make a chunk good chunk of money in a small period of time so it just fits the lifestyle that i want to have down the road there you go absolutely i love it Awesome. Cool. So, um, so yeah, let's get into, um, you had kind of mentioned that this season for you has been a tad expensive, been it, through a couple it, it's parts. It's been pretty pieces. pricey. <laughs> yeah. So more let's, than a, more than a couple. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. jump into that. Take uh-huh. us, take us through kind of what's, uh, why that that's been that way for you. Yeah. So, uh, our season in Washington snow didn't come, it it came early. Actually it did come early, but then it went all the way. So early season, we had a couple good ridings. I think I rode, um, the week after Thanksgiving, don't quote me on that, but it was, it was good snow. It was deep, but not really a base. So you just sink really. Um, but after like December, really snow turned shitty, you know, it was like an ice pack layer and we just, we didn't get snow for like a month straight. Yeah. Um, but February, I went to McCall, and this is this is kind of where my damage started happening. At snow, uh, not much snow in McCall, and um, I was riding too aggressive to the snow conditions we had. Um, I wasn't, I didn't match my riding style to the snow conditions we had. I was riding like it was deep, which it wasn't, and I had my sled on the edge doing a side hill, and I smacked a rock, um, left side, bent my a arm in my upper a arm, and just demolished the shock just my <laughs> just broke the shock oil shock all over the place and so we had to tow it out had to go home that uh our mccall trip i think was planned for a week and it turned out to be two days oh. so I turned around after two days in mccall um and then back forward i think and my other damage i was in uh, eastern washington riding in winthrop and um i hit a stump i was going down i climb and i turned around and i hit a stump and i go over to handlebars and what the fuck just happened and i look down and my sled's cricking my ski falls off my shocks all over the place my upper and lower a arm and plastic broken and i just smacked a rock so that was both of the shocks were done for the season i had to put spare shocks that were on like a 15 on them which they worked i went through two a arms this season um that's one too many um <laughs> And I hit a tree. I can't remember what, what red that was, but I hit a tree in my, my my gauge where it says like how fast you're going. And it's like that gauge on the Arctic Cat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I broke that, roll, rolled the sled. That was a $700 fix just because I rolled the sled. So my, my my year, my season was pretty spendy and it wasn't, it wasn't what I was expecting. I wish I could have done a lot more riding and a lot better snow. But sure. due to the snow conditions, I think my season was a more expensive. Um, Got it. Got it. So what are, uh, <laughs> dude, I mean, snowmobiling without breaking parts is expensive. However yeah. you want to dice it no, up. I mean, and, Oh, and then I forgot, and I forgot uh, my last ride. It was my last ride before I had to come down to Oregon. It was a good day. It was deep. Had a lot of fun. Me and my buddy dropped down in these tight trees and it was a great day. It was bluebird day and we were heading out of the trail and I come around the, I got to admit, I got stuck on the trail. Uh-huh. Um, Happens to the best the of us. Trail. I don't know. How. I got tipped over on the trail and my handlebars got stuck in the snow and I couldn't get up. I finally got up and I don't know, hundred feet later, I turn around, coming around this corner and just, I don't know, low RPMs, not going very fast. And I just hear this big explode. Boom. And metal was laying to my left. Plastic was laying to my left. Steam was coming off my sled. I, and I just demolished my clutch and I got off and I radioed my dad was at the cabin I said there's metal flying all over the place I'm not sure what happened here 
and I and I take the plastic off because my lower panel just broke. Not it just broke. I took my side panel off and belts exploded. I penetrated the muffler. Um, just did a lot of damage on the last ride of the season. My clutch just my clutch. I think it was just telling me that I was done riding for the season. I just did a lot of damage over nine thousand dollars worth of repair. I had to buy a new clutch. I bought the uh, new kit that they have for like I think it was from twenty one up. I had a nineteen, so I bought the new clutch from twenty one up. Put that on mine and. I think I'm gonna sell it this coming season. So. <laughs> Expe- like well, I keep saying, it was an expensive season for sure. Well, whoever you sell it to, make sure that they don't hear this podcast with all the damage no. and torment you put that sled yeah. through. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah. Huh. Um. Jeez. Uh. So let's uh let's kind of go into a little bit um of kind of the places that you've you've been right so kind of sounds like all throughout washington did a trip to mccall where else have you uh have you have you ridden um yeah not 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 as many places as i wish um been to canada um, yeah because you're super close to the border aren't you yeah i'm five miles from the canadian border oh well yeah Yeah. (laughs) got it (laughs) um yeah so yeah i've been to canada been to uh idaho washington um yeah, that's really about it. Not as many places as I wish I could have been so far, but that's going to change hopefully soon. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Well, you have to come to Oregon. You're not too far. I mean, you're yeah, probably, no, I, if you're I, all the way north, you're probably a handful um, of hours away from me, but we've got some pretty, I mean, I've never ridden over like down kind of where you're at around. Um, I know you're a little ways from yeah. Bend, but I've never ridden over there, but we definitely got quite a quite a bit of pretty sick riding zones, um, in Eastern Oregon. Right. And I've, I would like to get into Washington some more. Um, you know, I've, I've hit, uh, well, honestly, Mount Adams is the only place in Washington I've ever even ridden. Um, and I had a horrible, yeah, like I had a horrible Mount experience. Baker, there. Yeah. yeah. I hear a lot about yeah, Baker. Our main stuff, so yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, what's, uh, if you go anywhere, what's, what's the number one place that you'd go? Oh, um, probably Revelstoke. Yeah, I just see, I just see a lot of film taken there. I see a lot of I see a lot of pictures, and I I'm always telling my dad I want to go to Revelstoke. He's always saying that's the dangerous place. I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's part of snowmobiling. <laughs> but I would like to go to Revelstoke, and I'd like to go to Alaska someday. Just, Dude, I've always wanted to go to Alaska, and the big they have. I would like to ride in Alaska someday. Yeah, that'd be sick. Um, I noticed I was just yeah. watching your story. You just shared one of Nick Pono's videos. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think we, no, yesterday I, I, on the phone call, we were talking. Didn't you listen to the episode with Nick? Or no? Uh, no. No. I, no, I listened to. Um, I, I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, it's no, all good. I haven't watched the episode. <laughs> yeah, you should. It's a, yeah. it's a really good no, one. I, Nick is, oh my gosh, he is a stud. He's a really funny dude, too. Yeah, he's crazy. Yeah, he's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to, love to go to Alaska for sure. I mean, it would probably. I don't know. It'd probably be somewhere I just fly up and rent some sleds just to ride. I don't know if I drive yeah. all the way up there um, in the middle of winter. Probably not, <laughs> um, but it would be pretty epic. I've I've been to Alaska several times throughout life, but just not to to ride sleds. It'd be a really sick place. Revelstoke too. It'd be really cool to go to. Um, pause for a second, real quick. Your screen. There you go. We got you back. Um, yeah. Cool. So, um, do you want to talk about this? this new sled that you just bought or is that hush hush for a minute um I, yeah i, I actually <laughs> can't i guess really say too much on it just because of uh his contract with certain people so sure. got it yeah. cool but, but it's a it's an yeah, arctic cat though unfortunately like yeah <laughs> yeah, it's again. yeah what a shame uh that's funny yeah <laughs> like i was telling you the only sleds we pulled off the mountain this year were blue. yeah 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 whatever those Articat, yeah. those Articat boys like to say that. I've got a couple friends that are some diehard Ar- Articat guys. Um, anyways, so I guess this is a, an interesting thing. I've never really asked this before on an episode. Who, um, out of everybody um, in social media land um, that we all follow for content and stuff, who's like, you know, top one, maybe top two or top three if you can't do less than three who are some of the top riders that you aspire to be like 
um, that you follow and keep up with their content and, and try to, you know, just aspire to be like. Yeah. Um, that's a hard one. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I've never say, asked it before. I would, I would say number one, I really do look up to Maverick Walker. Um, okay. His, yeah, he's a stud. his writing is, his writing is dope. Uh, he, like he's a dope guy. I've had like personal conversations with him. I just, I, I look up to him as an individual and he's, he's wild on a sled, but I do, I do have to throw it in there though. Um, Rob Kincaid, I, I personally met him in Salt Lake city at a snow show. Oh really? Yeah, I think that was like 20, 2016. I met him and Dave McClure, yep. um, in the Salt Lake snow show. And I had a personal conversation with both those guys and, they're both humble guys, but I would say like, I really did look up to Rob. I have a poster of him at, in my room at home, just him and uh, Dave. And I, I don't know. I, I see that every morning when I woke up at home and I, I do genuinely look up to that guy. He, sure. He was humble. And uh, w- what did happen to him was a shame, but I'd say he's number two um, looking up there, but not so much riding style, you know, yep. um, riding style, Ma- Maverick Walker for sure. And number three, uh, I would just say Caleb because they're crazy. <laughs> Like, yeah he's young and he makes it look easy he looks it look way too easy yeah yeah he's he's a stud sure. too. I, yeah but um those are my three writing style preference would be kyle and, uh K- or not kyle caleb and maverick and then uh, i look up to rob a lot yeah yeah that's a that's a pretty good list um it's interesting i think i'm gonna start asking that um to more people on the show so um why don't, you why don't i answer it Oh boy, my top three. So that was that was Jeff. Jeff is the producer that that does all the audio and the video stuff for all the sled send. Um, right on. Boy, my top three. Um, you know, I would probably say. Uh, I hate to say like the super big names, but honestly, uh, the first one that comes to my mind is uh dan adams um not not so much off of ride style but just like his whole take on the industry of snowmobiling and specifically like clinics and so i i've never gone to a riding clinic i would really like to go to next level um but i i do you know for sled send i do host retreats um for people that have never ridden to come ride and so you know, Dan's like breakdown and all of his YouTube videos and stuff and the attention to detail and the attention to safety, um, and how he teaches and his vernacular with his words and explains everything like, um, so as a whole, um, within industry and all those things that I just mentioned, probably Dan Adams for sure. Um, I mean, obviously everybody would, you know, like to say Chris Brandt, um, you know, I've, I've talked, yeah. I've talked to Chris personally a handful of times. I snow checked all the parts for my sled, um, through him. And, uh, I, on my sled that I built and stuff, I had some issues with a handful of parts. And so I had to have several conversations with Chris directly to get it all put together and taken care of and stuff. Um, and again, like as big as he is super humble, you know, and, and he took the time to help me with some silly things that, you know, to most people were probably simple fixes, but I just didn't know. And so he'd take the time to do that. Um, as far as like writing style, I, um, Caleb Kosturki is up there for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, another guy that, um, I aspire to be like, and, uh, he's actually a guest on the show. Um, in a previous episode is Jaden Ballard. Um, so Coor Freshies out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I don't know oh. if you follow him. Um, he's an incredible rider um, and he goes hard. And uh, and like I said, I've had him on the show and so I've talked to him personally. I haven't met him in person yet. Um, we do plan to, to do a trip over there because Coeur d'Alene's only like three hours from where I'm at. Um, and, you know, he was just a super humble dude, business owner, and I just had a really great conversation with him on the show. And he's just like, he's going hard on, on content, and he's um, he's just really fun to watch, um, and he's just a good dude. So, so yeah, I would say Dan Adams, Caleb Kosturki, Jaden Ballard. Um, I'm going to go with that. Thanks, All right, that's thanks, a good choice. Thanks for popping in there, Jeff. That's a good question. Um uh, so you, you had mentioned that here 
before too long, you have a pretty special phone call with a potential sponsor. Um, so do you currently, yeah. so do you currently have sponsors right now? Uh, no, zero. Zero. Not at all. Okay. Right on. Cool. Yep. Can you disclose who you're getting on the phone with? Or do you want to keep uh, that private? Cheetah Factory, Cheetah Factory Racing. So oh, it's nice. nothing big right now. Cool. Yeah. For bars or? Yeah. Yeah, for bars. Yeah. Heck yeah. I've been using their bar. I started using their bars for my uh, last season. And um, I kind of talk, communicate with them over social media. And they told me that they would uh, follow my season, which I posted the best content I could, not, not sure. all the broken stuff. <laughs> um, they, t- they told me to reach out with them and tag them in all my posts, which I did. So they wanted to talk. Heck yeah, that's awesome. Do you have your sights set on, on any other? Other companies? I'm sure it's probably a long um, list, of course, but yeah, what are some other top ones that list. you have your eyes on? Um, I think a big one would be 509, but that that's down the road. I just love their gear, um, which yeah. I don't wear right now. I'm going to be, I'm going to buy, I'm going to be on 509 next season, most likely. Nice. Um, but yeah, for like, I like, uh, there's not many right now, you know. I gotta start small. I can't talk big because sure. I'm not big right now. Oh, well, hey, gotta keep it good. small. <laughs> right yeah. on. Gotcha. Um, so, any? Do you have any big plans as far as next season? Do you have any big trips or places that you want to go? I know that you're getting a new sled, so that's gonna be oh, a whole yeah. new thing in itself. Yeah, I would like to. Yeah, make a, make a couple of trips to Canada. I'd like to go to um, Alpine, Wyoming, and ride with. Um, Cody, uh, Cody Hunt. I, I've been talking to him last a little bit last season, and if I go down there, he said he'd show me around the mountains around there. So, make it down to Alpine, Wyoming, and uh, ride with Cody Hunt. Um, I was talking to uh, Maverick, like I told you, and uh, might go up to Canada together too. So that'd be cool. Heck Just yeah. depends on everything works out. It was kind of a pain to get through the border this year, which I didn't go at all. But sure. um, plans yeah. for next season: just work work hard this summer and see what winter brings next season. Heck yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, we've got uh, we've got some stuff planned for what we're doing. So I think we're gonna try to do a trip uh, to next level with Dan. Um, I was supposed to go to McCall a couple couple uh, weekends ago, but that fell through. Also was supposed to go to Island Park at one point. That didn't happen either. <laughs> um, but we did get yeah, up to snow. go ahead. The snow in McCall, or Ida, at least McCall, wasn't so hot this season. I wouldn't say you're missing out on too much. Yeah. But um, Cody Moore Monroe, or whatever his last name is, yeah. I follow him. But like a couple months after McCall, or a month or so, he was posting pictures, and it looked like it got good just right when we left. So yeah. I don't know. It looks like it switched around. But it looks like so. winter was late for a lot of places this season. Yeah, winter was weird, man. I don't know. For us, like in my like local group here, I had quite a few guys that got some new sleds. My cousin got a new snow bike, and like um, the overall like energy was just real high. Everybody was vibing, you know, going into the start of the season excited. And December was just nuts for where we're at. Like I rode in the most snow I've ever ridden in December here this this year, and uh, and then like first week of January we were just getting dumped on. I mean, they got like in a couple of days, they got almost three feet and then it just warmed up and rained and it was like 50 degrees and it rained for like three or four days. And then all of January was just crap. Um, The season snow wise really honestly kind of sucked, which was really unfortunate because like it was just super hype right at the beginning. And we're like, oh my gosh, this is going to turn into an incredible base. And and then it just kind of went to crap. But, you know, no control over it. I mean, you know, like they say, any day snowmobile is a good day. <laughs> so yeah, One more thing I could hit on. Uh, one more thing I could hit on this season that uh, I did for the first time. I did. Uh, I got my level one in avalanche training. Um, nice. I did too. I did, through, I, did through, I did it through a company in Washington State, Elevated Backcountry. So shout out to them. Yeah. They see this. Um, but I did my level one with them. And uh, I was a. Uh, Three day course and I th- it was a uh, it was really interesting. I learned a lot that I didn't know and um, I I learned a lot about snow that I didn't really know that exists. There's a lot more to snow than it just falling on the ground and sitting there. So yep. I plan to do a lot more education within it. I only did my level one, but um, that was a good experience uh, beginning of the season this year. Yeah, um, 
I was gonna do a ride. I was gonna do a ride clinic uh, through them uh, with Scott Iyer was gonna come up, but oh, that yeah. fell through. I don't think they had enough enough signups, and I had to sign out because I was coming down to Oregon for work. But sure, yeah, Scott Iyer is a, he's a, he's a stud too. He was on the show shortly after Jaden was. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should check that episode out. Um, it was cool. He's a good dude. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I followed that uh, that company that you're talking about. And so, dude, same thing. When I went to my, um, so I did level one plus a, um, uh, it was a two day level one, and then it was a one day avalanche rescue course. But it was like three days in a row. Um, yeah, that's how it was for me. It was like a two day, or it was like a day. I can't quite remember, but it was for sure a two day field day and a day on the Zoom. Okay. Two day field day though. Yeah. 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 It was super eye opening for me, you know, um, being obsessed with snowmobiling and snow in general and growing up in Montana most of my life and, you know, always loving winter. Um, I was blown away at how little I actually knew about snow. Um, you know, when they, yeah. when we dug the pit and did that whole thing, like it was just incredible, the temperatures and so many layers and different things that play into effect. Um, so super interesting uh, to learn about that. And then another thing too was like your gear and the knowledge around the transceivers. Like, I mean, you know, yeah, we spend all this money like, to get all this gear and yet we don't take the time to figure out how to actually use, use it. hundred percent. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's funny. It's funny you say that because I didn't even know, like I go out, leave the truck, check my beacon. One, I never did beacon checks and I just turn a, I just turn a knob, wait for a beep and I say, oh, it's on, it's working. I never did beacon checks and I never knew how to use a beacon until that course really. Yeah. Um, and that's like, if something would have went down in the mountains in the back country before that training, I, I don't think I would have been much of a help. Um, cause I didn't know how to use a beacon. I didn't even know how to like, de- I didn't even know how to like get my probe undone sure. the proper way. So yeah. doing, doing that class, just the level one taught me enough of the basics, but there is uh, still more to learn. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. It was pretty interesting. Um, I'm glad that I got exposed to it and, and, uh, and we did an episode. I actually went with a local buddy here, um, to the course. And then I had him come on and do a podcast right after we went through it. And so we talked about it. Um, it was a really great episode and, uh, you know, I, I felt a calling after I went through that to do more with our local avalanche center. Um, and so I intend to reach out to those guys and have them come on the podcast and even go as far as, um, you know, donating, uh, mine and, and, uh, uh, Jeff's time to go out and film in, in a, in a, um, a future course just to kind of go, you know, cause obviously like, you know, we're going pretty hard with content and all the social media platforms and stuff. And I think it's important to capture content of those courses and bring more awareness. Um, you know, it's just like what you said, like, we just had no idea how to, to work this transceiver. I just, it would beep and turn on and we'd be good to go. And I so was just wearing all that expensive gear without not knowing how to use it. So it's like right and, and same for me, it right? By wearing it. Yeah, so and yeah. same for me. So, you know, obviously you and I aren't the only one that feels that way, right? So it's important to bring more awareness to it. I think it's a it's a great thing. And and like I've always said in the past too, it's I mean, these sleds are taking us into some pretty gnarly areas and you know, it's we're just building more and more confidence within ourselves and our sleds and just going crazier places. And so, um, it's important to have, have that knowledge for sure. So, yeah. Um, so at typically towards the back half of the, the episode, I, I bring in Jeff, um, to ask a question. I know he had already piped in there and asked one, but Jeff, from what you've heard so far, you got a, you got a question for Levi. He, he loves it when I put him on the spot like that. <laughs> yeah. But. Okay. Um, he, he said to, to, to circle back to him. Um, okay. So, uh, man, I really want to talk about this sled that you're getting. <laughs> he says, no. Uh-uh. Um, <laughs> Uh, what was the question? No, I was going to ask more about uh, more specific stuff about the about the sled, but I don't want you to reveal anything without okay. giving it away. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you, what do you want to know? Ask it. Well, I was just wondering if you could, like, any kind of mods that are on it that you can reveal. Uh, so there's a stage two kit on it. Um, 
an Octane Ink wrap, which I'm going to rip it off because I'm not going to rock someone else's wrap. Yeah. Uh, he's got Cheetah Bars, Cheetah Pad, um, Ice Age. It's a twin rail. He's got Ice Age rails. Um, and then probably a lot more that I'm not sure of yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Have you ever been on something with that much of- power? Um, Wait, what did you, what's... No. No? Okay. All right, it's a stage two? It's a, it's one, yeah, stage two. Oh, boy. <laughs> that get you in trouble. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's a 154 2022 hardcore stage two with all the other mods on it. First thing, um, I got 15 minutes till that call. I gotta get on. Oh. Um, okay. All right. Well, we can wrap it up. Jeff, did you want to ask something? Did you think of something? No. I, I've been in and out. I haven't been. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I I totally. Good thing you said something because I totally spaced that you have to get on a super important call here in a minute. Um. So Levi, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, you know, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you taking the time um, to jump on here and yeah, reach out to, to, to. Yeah, totally. So let's end it with um, let's end it with a sled talk question. So, what would you like to ask the listeners and the viewers? Um, told you I'd put you on the spot. Dialed. Yeah. <laughs> um. Ask a. I ask, I oh, go ahead. What? I was just gonna say, try to think of something specific for for Articat. Articat doesn't get enough love. They're good sleds. I mean, I like to talk crap about them, but <laughs> I know there's a lot of guys that ask, are diehard. I was gonna ask, what, yeah, I was gonna ask, what is one spare part that would what what is one spare part that you would carry that could be brake lever, brake reservoir, because those small things would break. So, what is what would you choose one small extra part you would bring in the back country just in case it would break heck yeah that's a great question um definitely yeah. for you guys listening uh leave your leave your answer in the comments below whether you saw watching this on tiktok or instagram reels or even on the youtube page um leave your comments below i want to know what that one part is that's a really great great question levi um jeff has some real probably yeah what would Go what ahead. would yours be for me it would probably be a, th- a throttle or a brake lever because those are two main like if you don't got a throttle it's gonna hurt and if you don't got a brake lever it's gonna hurt especially <laughs> the terrain that we especially with brake the terrain that we ride in it's gonna be pretty difficult to get down without a brake yeah for but sure. a ski, you could put a belt on a ski loop but that's not gonna help all the time yeah for sure jeff what was your thing oh since he's a, a firefighter now is he gonna tell us how to get stopped by the ride <laughs> <laughs> did you hear what he said i feel like i heard firefighting yeah so he said since you're a firefighter now are you, are you going to reveal to us where all the good burn riding spots are next um season. next season <laughs> yeah i'll i'll keep a notes on my uh, phone i'll take pictures go. and uh drop the gps location heck yeah <laughs> slide in the dms anytime <laughs> yeah, with that information Hell yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. We'll, we'll wrap this episode up. Um, Levi, again, I appreciate you jumping in and for the sled talk listeners. Thank you guys for always being here. Um, regardless of what channel you guys are on, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And as always, um, every single Friday, releasing an episode 7am Pacific standard time. So, uh, yeah, we will catch you guys on the next one. Living life with no regrets. Okay. Designer when I get dressed. Hey. Hey. Summertime on winter fresh. Fresh. I put her legs behind her head. Night night she gone to bed. Bye bye. Every day it's a new test. Uh, I just keep chasing these chicks.